Welcome to Design Santa Barbara. I'm Michael Karash and today we are in Santa Barbara Design Center with a very special guest. Ron Atwood is one of Santa Barbara's foremost experts on African art. He is the owner of Atwood African Masterworks and a good friend of the show. Great to have you here, Ron. Nice to be here. Tell me a little bit about your history and how African art came into your life. That's a good question. It really began before I entered the Peace Corps. I was one of the Kennedy children, and it was a pretty woman who did it. It was Kim Novak. And some of you who are as old as I will remember the movie Bell, Book, and Candle. And Kim Novak played a ravishing witch with the Siamese cat on her shoulder. I saw that movie when it came out in 1958. That tells you how old I am. And I never got over it because in it, there was a gallery of African art from New York used as a set. And I was as transfixed by the pieces in that movie set as I was by Kim Novak. That's actually where it started. And then I went in the Peace Corps and that really excited my interest. I didn't know that. Wonderful. Tell our viewers about the connection between Africa and fashion. That's a good question. And that's why I brought up Kim Novak. She was quite a ravishing woman with a good sense of style. I think you got impressed by her quite a lot. I was quite impressed by her. <laughs> I couldn't collect her, but at least I could get some of the African art. As far as the world of fashion goes, uh, you might notice that I'm wearing something, a piece of jewelry. A lot of people who see this don't know what it is. They assume because of the general shape that it may be a Christian cross and that I might be uh, a father, but I'm not. This is actually from the Dogon people, very ancient in the country of Mali, one of the earliest African civilizations. And it has symbolic elements. There is a cross behind it, but the figure is not pinned to the cross. The figure is a kneeling older man supported by two snakes on either side, which are totemic animals among the Dogon. And on the back is an alligator. All of those are totemic animals among the Dogon, who, by the way, are farmers. One of the things they farm, more jewelry and fashion, are peanuts. Oh, interesting. Peanuts, that's my pinky ring. It was one of the first pieces of African art I ever collected. Now, that tells you that there's an influence on jewelry and fashion. But what we should really see at this point is a larger picture of the influence of African art on the world of fashion. And for that, there's a special video that has been pre prepared for our viewers, which you are going to be able to see at this point. The music is like a ramp model, and the fashion models that you're going to see include Marlene Dietrich. You're going to see something that's based on that mask for her. You're going to see Naomi Campbell, and you're also going to see one of the first African Americans who appeared on the cover of Vogue magazine. So that's where we're going to start. Excellent. Wonderful.
Ron, that was fascinating. All right, I have another question for you. Sure. What is the most common question you're asked about African oil? The most common question I always get is, where is it from and how old is it? Both of them are difficult questions to answer because one, where is it from, does not necessarily involve a country. Africa was divided up during the colonial period and the tribes that we actually name like Hopi Indian, you don't say the Arizona Indians, you say the Hopi. And with African art, you say the Shi, the Senofo, the Ashanti. And when it comes to the world of fashion, something that viewers will like to know, you've got some right here. These are Showa cloth, actual African fabrics called African velvet. And you see them used frequently as accents. Another type that is based on African cloth are these pillows here, which use indigo dye. And you have them available here at the Design Center. And they make nice accent pieces in this world of fashion that we're talking about. Then finally, one more thing. Let's talk about furniture. There's a lot of influence in the fashion industry if you consider certainly design of furniture is a fashionable thing. And here you have a classic neck rest from Ethiopia. That's such a simple and beautiful accent in the world of design. Very fashionable. Especially pa fashionable in Paris are these stools which come from the Ashanti people of Ghana. So you have the full breadth of fashion in fabrics, in jewelry, in what people wear, and that's the whole world of African fashion, which I hope that viewers have now enjoyed. Quite amazing. When we get back, Ron and I will talk about African art and avant-garde.